Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Rutherford, Clinic Director of Power Health Rehab and Wellness in Reno. And today we're going to be talking about whack-a-mole healthcare versus classic functional medicine procedures. Uh, I, I, what brought this topic to, uh, to the forefront for me has just been uh, the, the understanding and, and that I'm seeing a different patient population than I saw 12 years ago. I've been in functional medicine for quite some time. Could, I think I could legitimately argue I was in the pool, one of the original functional medicine practitioners. And, uh, and, and it was quite a different experience back then than it is now treating functional medicine uh, uh, seekers, if you will. And so basically, every, uh, in our clinic, we, we interview everybody. We interview everybody before we even decide whether that individual would be a qualified patient to go through a functional medicine practice and, and get a consistently successful result. And in these interviews, things have changed quite a bit. In the day, in the day uh, uh, when we first started out and, 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 and patients were just desperate to get better, we pretty much treat chronic pain, chronic conditions back then. People came in, people didn't really know much about much of anything <laughs> when it came to alternative healthcare. Um, if you said the word gluten to somebody back then, they'd go, gluten, what's that? Or they'd, or they'd go, oh, you're one of those. Or something along those lines. Uh, now I think uh, gluten has become more and more widely accepted. Um, you talk to people about diet, at that point in time, people would say, diet, how's food gonna help anything? How's food gonna change? I'm, I'm in pain, I got pain in every joint in my body and I got, uh, I got inflammation and that sounds dumb. Today, everybody who comes into my office has already tried five different diets and believes that they're familiar with those diets and believe that because they tried those diets and they didn't work, that the diet probably isn't gonna be a part of what's gonna be helping them. So there, there, there's just been a, a, a significant change again back then in the day. I, well, I think I'm gonna go talk to my medical doctor and see if he thinks that I should work with you. And today it's like, I already went to my medical doctor and, uh, and, and my medical doctor really can't help me. And my medical doctor is playing whack-a-mole. My, my, my medical doctor is looking at, 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 at symptoms that pre people kind of have that down today. My medical doctor is looking at symptoms and they can just give me a pill. And frankly, I usually go into defend the poor medical doctor because they're working with their hands tied behind their back, having to work by insurance uh, codes and things of that nature. So, so there's been an evolution of the patient that walks in here. Some ways it's a lot easier um, today. In some ways it's a lot harder because I used the, the term whack-a-mole. We used it in the intro and, and, and in the title of this talk. And it's kind of like what I'm seeing. I, I'm seeing we've now morphed from the patients who used to come in largely had not gone to alternative practitioners in the day. They usually came straight to us because they desperately heard there's some nut over there that thinks that he can help me with fibromyalgia or peripheral neuropathy or chronic fatigue. Today, we're getting people who are highly educated. Maybe not necessarily in the right things or maybe they're ne educated in the right things but necessar not necessarily in the right context. And that has a lot to do with the internet, has a lot to do with the explosion of functional medicine, has a lot to do with the fact that functional medicine is still not a uh, organized discipline, it's not a a regulated discipline, so um, it, it, anybody really who gives a supplement or diet can call themselves a functional medicine practitioner even if they haven't gone through a certified functional medicine program. And, and, and another big reason is, is of course the internet, the big bad internet. And, and that's a problem because uh, today what I'm getting is, and then just you know to put things in perspective, we've had over 40,000 patients come through this through this facility over a period of time. We haven't treated all those, but we've treated an awful lot of them. And uh, what we have interviewed and, and evaluated, uh, pretty much almost all of them. So we have a pretty good feel for, for what we can treat and what we can't treat, what questions they ask. And obviously we have a good feel for the lay of the land in alternative healthcare, as well as in functional medicine as well as in chronic pain. And so today I'm getting the patient who comes in and 
They've already been on, like I said, they've already been on, they've been on the, the, the paleo diet, they've been on the autoimmune paleo diet, they've been on the Whole30 diet, they've been on the FODMAP diet, they're on the FODMAP diet, they're eating better, quote unquote, I'm eating better than your diet, so how are you gonna help me? And all of these things have some validity, they have some legitimacy to them. And, but, 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 but when you get into chronic pain, you could have 150 people come in here with fibromyalgia and they can all have a, a slightly different to a drastically different complete physical biochemistry. And, and, and what helps one person is not going to help the other. But what I'm getting now is the person who is coming in and they, and they have been on the internet and they, or they've been other, or they have been to other functional medicine practitioners. And what I'm finding is, is a substantial portion of even the other functional medicine practitioners, if indeed they are certified functional medicine practitioners, are using kind of like uh, bits and pieces of the whole functional medicine paradigm. It was whack-a-mole versus the classic functional medicine paradigm. The functional medicine paradigm is very comprehensive. It's very organized. It's gone through a lot of trial and error throughout its history. A functional medicine history taking is very comprehensive. It should cover you from, like literally, from the time you're born until the time you're sitting in front of that practitioner. That practitioner should understand the, the full breadth of being almost like your functional endocrinologist, your functional cardiologist, your functional gastroenterologist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because that's how you have to look at, at, at a chronic pain case. But what I'm getting is, is I'm getting people who are coming in who have um, become very conversant in bits and pieces of what they've learned on, mostly on the internet, or maybe from somebody who's not a functional medicine practitioner, and maybe a functional medicine practitioner who specializes in a certain area, which is okay if they're specializing in diabetes or if they're specializing in thyroid, as long as they know everything else that relates to those. And what I'm finding is that isn't the case. So the person comes in, they've been given a diet, they've been given a couple of supplements for, for, uh, for their thyroid, and, uh, and it didn't work and they want to come in, they want to know how I'm going to be different, which is a legitimate question at that point in time. Or, the, or, their, or, or, the, or that functional medicine practitioner who may not be a functional medicine practitioner is uh, treating their diabetes and you know, they're put them on a diet, have them, they, maybe they put them on a, on, on a specific diet that they're using for that. Um, maybe they give them some supplements, maybe they don't, maybe they have them walking around, but it doesn't take a whole functional medicine understanding, frankly, to get somebody's diabetes type two under control. But yet they're, they're promoting themselves as a functional medicine practitioner, they're giving them a bunch of supplements. And, it, and, and so I kind of have to, when, it, when, when this person who has had their diabetes may be taken care of, and then they show up with fibromyalgia or peripheral neuropathy or PCOS or chronic fatigue or something like that, they go, well, I already, fig I already got this figured out. Or that functional medicine practitioner already healed my leaky gut, so you don't have to do that. Uh, just for the record, um, and, and I don't know if you heard it, if, you, if this is the first time you're hearing it, you're hearing it first, you don't heal a leaky gut. Okay, I have a leaky gut, I have celiac, I have all this stuff. For those of you who've seen me before, I have fibromyalgia, peripheral neuropathy, chronic fatigue, I have uh, celiac, I, uh, so I've had all this. I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So I've, I've been on the other side of this. I've, I've actually walked through this as a patient. Uh, and, and be, before I got involved in this. And so the, 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 what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to is, is that we've always criticized the medical field for playing whack-a-mole, but what I'm seeing is the alternative healthcare is now starting to play whack-a-mole because a lot of people are not certified functional medicine practitioners. What does that mean? When you're a certified functional medicine practitioner, you either have gone to, you either have gone to uh, functional medicine university, functional medicine institute, You've either gone to Arizona State, now has a, a bunch of nice uh, programs. Uh, there's another program at Bridgeport University that's like 1,500 hours. These universities, these, uh, these, the, 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 uh, the, the professionals who are putting on the seminars for you to get a functional medicine certification teach you 
functional medicine. They teach you the endocrinology. They teach you, they teach you the blood labs. They teach you everything that you need to know to go out there. Problem is a lot of people are not getting that. They go to one seminar, they go to a weekend seminar, it's gonna teach you everything you need to know, and then the next thing you know, you're specializing in diabetes. They go over there, you don't get an exam, you don't get that history. M maybe you get a computerized uh, 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 readout on your blood labs. Maybe that person doesn't even know how to read the blood labs. I mean, this is for real, I'm not being a jerk here, okay? And, 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 then, and, then, th and then those blood labs come from a computer program that came from uh, a, a supplement company that is telling them to read this and then give these supplements for that. And we see, I've seen hundreds of these cases, okay? And this is why I'm getting into this, because it makes my job harder. And then that person plays whack-a-mole. That person's like, okay, we're gonna do, you got, a ba you got irritable bowel syndrome, so we're gonna give you, uh, we're gonna give you berberine, or we're gonna give you uh, uh, glutamine, or we're gonna have you drink aloe vera, or you got acid indigestion, so we're gonna give you uh, glutamate for that, or, or these, are, these are things that are widely understood now, widely known on the internet. Uh, ashwagandha, you, got, you have anxiety, okay, take some ashwagandha, but, but that's not functional medicine. Functional medicine is what's causing the anxiety. Functional medicine is, is why are you having to take the hydrochloric acid, the Bragg's apple cider vinegar for your stomach and, 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 when, when, and, and why, why is your gallbladder not working and why do you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? When if you're in functional medicine office, they're gonna go, you know, it might be because you're stressed or it might be because you have a bad thyroid. One will decrease hydrochloric acid which will then screw up your stomach, which will then screw up your gut, which will then screw up your bacteria, and th the thyroid becomes actually th the issue. Whereas what I'm seeing is people are coming in here, they're very proud of themselves. They have two bags of supplements, and they, have one for the, and they have one for the hydrochloric acid, and they have one for the uh, gallbladder, and they have, one they have digestive enzymes for the pancreas, and they have uh, aloe vera for the inside of their intestines, and, and, so, and so then that person comes in and tells me, well, I've already, got, I've already healed all this. And I, I, don't really, I don't really need you to like really deal with that for me. And, and that like puts me back because I do really need to deal with that because you really haven't fixed it, okay? You really haven't gotten to the source of the, so the cause. And how many times have you heard your alternative practitioner say, we're getting to the source of the problem. Here, take this ashwagandha and that's what's doing it. And so, so the reality is, is we're now playing whack-a-mole on that side too. Here's the problem. The problem is most people who find their way to functional medicine practitioners have tried everything else. How do I know? Because that's what we're seeing now. And, and, and this is a very, very complex, comprehensive uh, protocol, classic functional medicine. It requires taking, a, taking that history. I just, had one, I just had one earlier today and the gentleman came in here, he's got peripheral neuropathy. And he's got peripheral neuropathy and he's got burning numbness, tingling his feet. By the time we got done teasing it out, this gentleman has been an emotionally traumatic, uh, he's been emotionally traumatized since he was a child. And he, he's had really, really a lot of stress throughout, throughout, his, throughout his entire lifetime. Uh, as we got, uh, as we really went further and further, he didn't think he, he had a problem because he was told, well, your blood sugars are okay. I said, but you look like you've got prediabetes and insulin resistance. He goes, I do. Well, that's a problem. But his doctor eh, told him that it was, that it was okay. But nobody took that history, nobody, and he's been to a couple of alternative practitioners, okay? Then, did anybody do an exam on him? No, nobody did an exam on him to find out what kind of a small fiber neuropathy did he have, and where did it come from? This is what needs to occur, and this is classic functional medicine. If you're not, if you're not getting, if you're not, if, if you have somebody sitting down with you for five minutes, or they're giving you like three pages, and then here's all the symptoms, and then they're giving you a supplement for each thing, or they're giving you one diet, their diet's the elimination diet, which is fine. But you're not gonna, the elimination diet's not gonna work well without getting into the details and in the weeds on this, which we will get into other presentations in the future, okay? If you get a bad thyroid. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work if, you have, if you're in a chronic stress response because you've been emotionally traumatized and you're, and you're in some sort of post-traumatic stress syndrome that's screwing up your gut and you're trying to do an allergy elimination diet while this is screwing up your gut. This is functional medicine. 
Functional medicine is real medicine. It is blue collar medicine. It is getting the weeds and figure out what's wrong with somebody medicine. Okay, and so basically what we got is, is we have a whole group out there of practitioners who, are, who have now taken the medical model and are now taking that and creating a model of whack-a-mole alternative medicine. Here's, 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 here's my symptoms, here's the, here's the herb, here's the botanical, here's the vitamin, and, and then the patient comes in here and they're telling me how, 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 how that helped them, and yet the vast, I, the vast majority of the time, that hasn't helped them. It has helped them dampen their symptoms, but it still is helping to ignore the underlying problem that's perpetuating them having to take this stuff for the rest of their life. The vast majority of people who walk out of here, who, who walk in here, will walk in here sometimes with 20, 20 supplements or more sometimes, which is crazy, okay? And you might not think it's crazy, but if you're taking them, it's crazy because your physiology can't take that much. The goal of functional medicine is just to figure out how to get your physiology as in balance and fixing your entire physiology as, as, as thoroughly as you can so that that person needs as few outside interventions as possible. And that goes for medication and that goes for supplements. And usually people walk out of here with a few supplements, but they don't walk out of here with bags of supplements. And, and maybe the person even still needs a medication if, if, we, if you can't get their physiology all the way back to where you want. But, but you, so when you, so what, I, so what I, the whole point of this is, is, is now we have the internet where everybody can sit on it all day long and you can, and you can read about, you know, leaky gut and then come in and talk to me about leaky gut, but not know that you really don't know the full breadth of leaky gut. Or maybe not know that you don't know the full breadth of hydrochloric acid and, 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 and why you're taking Bragg's apple cider vinegar for your, for, your, for your tummy and why it's working and why if you did something else, you may not even need to take that. These are the things that are being done out there um, in, in the name of functional medicine. So I guess I'm trying to carve out an understanding of functional medicine. And, and, and so, uh, so it's, it, uh, you know, it, 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 it's really important for you before you get into a, a, a functional medicine practitioner to really understand what it is, understand the full breadth of what it is, understand that it's, it's if you go into a functional medicine practitioner, they should be sitting down with you and taking a full history. I, I, it takes me, it, sometimes it takes me an hour to take a complete history. We actually have three doctors working to do an exam on the patient. And the exams will go anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Did I make that up? No. No, my mentor, uh, for those of you who've listened to me, uh, and, uh, is named Dr. Karazian. Dr. Karazian uh, is the gentleman who was the first one to bring Hashimoto's to the world, as far as understanding that it was a, it was a, a real issue with hypothyroidism. When, when you take his courses, when you take their certified me uh, medicine courses, and you get their manuals, there are full uh, exams in there that you should do because you, there's just certain data that you can only glean from an exam. How did I know that that gentleman had uh, prediabetes when he was just sitting there at the table? He had all the physical signs of it as I was looking at How did I know that he was in chronic stress response? I told him, I, I said, are you in like, do you have emotional trauma? He went, well, how did you know? Because I shook his hand and his hand was soaking wet and slimy. That's called hyperhidrosis. That come, for those of you who have that, that means you're in a chronic stress response. And those stress hormones are important to know because if you've got those there and you're trying to do gut problems and you're trying to fix other things, that's not gonna happen. And I go on and on for an hour on, on just the exam and all the things you can do. The way you evaluate a case is you take a good history, you then do a good exam, and where that history and that exam intersects, that should dictate your testing. And your should, testing should be very specific and it should give you data as to how to fix that patient, and, and, and then you fix that. The, 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 to wrap it, kind of wrap it up, uh, the, to give you an example. I have a patient who walks in, and the patient says, uh, I'm fatigued. I have chronic fatigue. So, and I've been to the alternative practice. I went, I went to the doctor, and the doctor says, I'm depressed. So he gave me antidepressants. <laughs> so that's the answer for that, for, for fatigue. Then the patient says, uh, well, you know, I've gone to a couple of other alternative practitioners, maybe functional medicine practitioner, maybe, maybe other types of alternative practitioners. And, uh, and fatigue, they gave me, uh, 
they gave me some L-carnitine and, and, and they gave me some CoQ10 and, and, and there's a number of things that you can give people for fatigue. Maybe they, maybe they gave you DHEA, maybe they gave you pregnenolone, not knowing that maybe that wasn't the right thing to do, but it gave you energy, all right? So this is whack-a-mole. This is like, we're gonna, we're gonna give you something that's gonna give you energy. But here's the deal. Somebody walks in here with chronic fatigue, I'm gonna be looking at thyroid, mismanaged, misdiagnosed. I'm gonna be looking at blood sugar, mismanaged, misdiagnosed. I'm gonna be looking at, uh, I'm gonna be looking at uh, thyroid, blood sugar, stress hormones, mis misdiagnosed, mismanaged, not even addressed. I'm gonna be looking at gut problems. Maybe I'm gonna be looking at Epstein-Barr virus, probably gonna be looking for anemia. That's what walks in here. That's chronic fatigue, okay? Now, a vast majority of the patients who come in here who are chronically fatigued are overweight probably 70% of them that walk in here. So let's say that person walked in here and didn't tell me they were fatigued, and they said, I, I, I'm overweight. I mean, there is literally nothing that I, that I can do. I, I mean, I, and I'm, I can ride my bike, this is a natural case. I can ride my bike 20 miles a day, and I can eat 1,500 calories a day, and I eat the right things, and over a period of a year, I lost eight pounds, and as soon as I got off the diet, I put my eight pounds on back in a week. So to that person, I will say, it's not calories in, calories out for you. It's not exercise for you. It's thyroid, blood sugar, stress hormones, gut. Does that sound familiar? That's, that's very familiar to what I just said for chronic fatigue. So the point being, I would be having the same exact conversation with both of those people because, because their entire physiology is creating different things. And I'll throw one more thing in there. Next person comes in, they got irritable bowel syndrome. They come in there and they go, I'm here for irritable bowel syndrome. So I'm talking to them, I look at their stuff, I look at their history, and I notice that they're overweight. And then I ask them, can they lose weight? And they go, no, I can't lose weight. Okay, I thought, no matter what I do, I can't lose weight. And then I look at their box and they put, uh, you know, I get six hours, I get five hours of sleep, to, uh, and, and I'm, I'm really always tired. Would you say I have chronic fatigue? Oh yeah, my doctor would tell me I have chronic fatigue. So these, they have chronic fatigue, they can't lose weight, and they got irritable bowel syndrome. They came in for irritable bowel syndrome. Am I gonna give them something for irritable bowel syndrome and ignore the fact that they probably have thyroid, blood sugar, and stress hormones, that they may have anemia, that, that, no. So the point would be, you would have the same conversation with all of those folks while ultimately directing their attention to the part that their, why their gut is being affected but why these other issues are also a part of it. This is functional medicine. This is not like up for debate. This is classic functional medicine. This is what is this is what's taught in functional medicine university. This is what's taught in functional medicine institute. This is what the, what are what's being taught at the evolving functional medicine uh, 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 courses that are being done out there. So I mean, this has just been something that's that's come to my mind. It's actually made my my job a little bit harder than when people used to just come in here years ago and go, I'm desperate. Just I have all this stuff. Somebody told me you helped them. Just whatever you want to do, just do it. Okay. Now it's a little bit more involved. Now I have to kind of like deprogram sometimes people. Some, I'm very good at it, I'm very polite, I'm not a jerk, but the reality is, is if I'm gonna enter into a relationship with a person and they are experts in all of these things, but they're experts in leaky gut out of context to everything else, or if they're embracing this one diet because they lost 30 pounds, but they're still in my office with chronic fatigue, peripheral neuropathy, fibromyalgia, and all those types of things, and I need them to change that diet to another diet. I, I, it's really hard for me if I have to like debate them. And just what I'm beginning to realize is, is the, again, the functional medicine, now people actually know the term functional medicine, but you know, but, but I, I go back to the point that I used the, I, I used the term classic functional medicine. So I mean, if I'm going into a, a functional medicine practitioner's office, I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna ask them is like, what type of functional medicine do you practice? Are you a certified functional medicine practitioner? In other words, did you take a minimum of 125 to 250 hours of a course in which you actually had to take a test and become a certified functional medicine practitioner? How long have you been doing this? Because depending on how long the person's been doing it, that's the, the longer you've been doing it, the more serious the cases you can take. I know when I started out, I was taking some cases I probably shouldn't have taken because I just didn't know not to take them. So these are some of the things that, that, that I'd like you to, to, to understand. People are out there and they're just doing like, it's fine, they might be a classic functional medicine practitioner, just, just, they might just be 
you know, specializing in diabetes or thyroid or something like that. That's fine, as long as they know all the other stuff, because that diabetes might be in context with the chronic fatigue patient that I had come in. It might be in context with the person who came with fibromyalgia. It might be in context with that person who came in with, with uh, irritable bowel syndrome. And I can tell you, irritable bowel syndrome al goes a, a long way towards screwing up your blood sugar and making it difficult for your diabetes to get better. So th this is functional medicine, okay? And I guess it's been kind of bugging me. And I, and, and I haven't been doing anything online for a while and, 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 and I wanted to start up again and, and we just felt like this might be a good place to start. So that's what I wanted to present to you today. Uh, if, and, uh, and, and I hope that uh, this is something that generates some understanding with you. I'm not trying to be mean to people who don't practice functional medicine in its classic sense. Maybe some of them don't even know that they're supposed to be certified. I don't know. I just don't know. I just know that my patient population is getting a little bit more difficult um, in the front. I'm starting to have to pro deprogram a lot of people. I start talking to them about the foundational elements of, of functional medicine and, and, and that you can't get better until you do ox get your oxygen under control, get your blood sugar under control, get your essential fatty acids under control. And they don't know what I'm talking about, but they tell me they've been the three functional medicine practitioners. And there's a lot more than that. So, so that's more or less my presentation for today. I hope that you find this uh, well, maybe not entertaining, but I certainly hope that you find us informative, especially if, if you have some problems, if you have chronic issues, I hope this maybe helps you to maybe assess where to go a little bit more when you're reading people's websites, when you're, when you're going in and interviewing doctors and, and just, you know, maybe knowing a, a little bit more of what questions to ask when you go in there. So, and if you want, you can let me know what you thought of this. I'm always open to, uh, to suggestions and, and to comments and the criticisms, and I'm, I'm good with that. That's how I learn. So thank you for tuning in, if you will. Thank you for watching me. I'm always humbled to be able to be up here and share my experiences with you, and I hope this was something that you find valuable.